I think another thing that convinces many people that these abductions are really happening is the seemingly magical technologies that the aliens the, uh, use to, say, for example, um, take someone from their bed in their dream state and they go right out through the walls of their house and they come back with scoop marks on their body and, and things. And you've personally um, experienced this astral body extraction technology. Yes, I actually did, and and it was interesting because I was uh, later briefed on a, a program that's uh, very human that has technologies to do this, and um, I think that uh, the famous case in New York City where uh, Paris de Cuellar was abducted out of his limousine and a witness was abducted out of her bedroom with him, uh, I've had confirmed to me from multiple sources was a uh, covert pseudo-abduction uh, pseudo contact case that was designed to stop Paris de Cuellar and the people he was working with at the time uh, from disclosing the, the, the actual fact that there is there have been secret programs dealing with extraterrestrials. They thought they were actually abducted by aliens, and uh, it turns out the electronics to do this were developed back in the 40s and 50s, and that uh, by 1956. Uh, these technologies were fully operational. And so uh, I think that one of the problems is that many people don't realize the extent to which sort of a, a, a how can you say it, a mad scientist, sort of a Dr. Strangelove uh, 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 characters have developed very advanced electronics, uh, what are called the WSFM, Weird Science and Frickin' Magic, literally it's what it's called in the business, that are trans-dimensional technologies that humans have had since the 40s and 50s at least. I mean, remember the Philadelphia experiment, which actually happened in Rhode Island, but that's another discussion, was in 1942, and that did happen. So th the question, you know, really has, you have to back the whole thing up and ask, what the heck is going on? And, and I think that, you know, it's uh, to begin to develop sweeping and highly prejudicial views towards a certain type of extraterrestrial when we know that there has been so much deliberate confusing of the picture uh, using extremely advanced technologies, so things that most people couldn't imagine exist because really the truth is stranger than the fiction that is the common dominant belief system. Uh, the, the fact that there would be um, uh, human programs that would have these types of electronics that literally can target people and affect their astral bodies and consciousness uh, very, very precisely. The fact that there would be these weird program life forms used on anti-gravity devices to engage in abductions to make it look like people are having alien encounters when they are not. Uh, the fact that they have uh, developed genetics to such an extent that this would be possible. And the fact that uh, at, at least a, a few people I've spoken to who have been in some of the really top secret electromagnetic research programs that deal with these trans-dimensional technologies, they've developed the means for people to hook themselves up uh, mentally to a actual device and go into a lower astral realm, of, you may call it a demonic, but where there's all kinds of scary creatures, and then materialize in the three-dimensional space-time that creature and literally manifest it. And when I first heard that, I laughed and thought, this is something out of a science fiction movie. Turns out that ability does exist. So you, you go down this path and you begin to realize that between the actual naturally occurring ultra-terrestrials, the sort of astral world, the angelic and the demonic, and then on top of it you have the man-made guys, the Dr. Strangeloves out there playing around with these electronics doing this stuff, and then you have a very deliberate attempt to create, as Douglas MacArthur said, a threat from outer space and the foundation of fear so people will support World War III, quote, interplanetary war, is what he said. So I think that all of this makes one want to take a pause and step back four or five big steps back and say, what is really going on here? And that's what I've tried to do. Now, in the course of doing that, I've been personally demonized. In fact, 
uh, during the Barcelona event, there was a, a person uh, who organized a group of people who on the very last day stormed the stage, uh, called me an anti, the Antichrist, uh, and viciously, we had, I mean, security had to, to move them out, out of the building. But the, what's happening is that it's sort of like with this healthcare debate where there's the big insurance industry whipping a lot, not everyone, but a lot of people up in a frenzy that big government's going to take away their health care, their private health care, and they're going to have to help provide insurance for the 50 million people who have no insurance in America. Um, and, you know, people are getting get into this frothy mob mentality. Well, that's what's happened, unfortunately, in the UFO and New Age community to the point now that I am receiving regular death threats, uh, I am receiving um, these sort of uh, attacks personally and physical attacks and when I'm on a stage um, where I have to have now security with me because of this kind of disruptive behavior. And I, this is precisely what the majestic, the secret government people would like to see happen, is to see people who uh, know about the subject get into that kind of what I call hate frenzy, which is exactly the kind of mob mentality you need in order to get the, the, the citizenry whipped up and angry enough to accept eventually some kind of sacrifice in the future. In this case, the sacrifice that they're going to ask people to make to engage in interplanetary war. And I think that we have to have calmer heads prevail. We need to have people who look at this and say, you know, who is manipulating the public awareness and emotions to such an extent that someone would, at this beautiful conference, storm the stage and attack me like this? Um, and, and what are the interests that would like to see people have something new to hate? You know, it's really not politically correct to uh, be openly a racist against any uh, particular race or religion or ethnic uh, group, uh, although it certainly still happens all over the world. It, it, it's not something that's acceptable any longer in our society, thank God. However, the new thing that is acceptable is to become a cosmic racist and to begin to hate people uh, from other star systems um, that are of a certain body type or a certain look a certain way. And I think people are just being manipulated. I honestly don't think that there's a threat out there. Um, and uh, one of the things that I have concluded a long time ago, since you cannot prove a negative and it's axiomatic, as I mentioned earlier, is that if there was a species that was a, of some concern that did not have the best interest of humanity or the Earth uh, in, in mind, I would think that since CSETI's CE5 initiative is a diplomatic outreach effort, citizens' diplomatic outreach effort, that we're modeling for other countries as well, for, for the world. And, and there's now a major uh, G7 country that is asking us to do this for them, um, to make open contact with these visitors. I would say that if someone really believes that there is a not an ultra-terrestrial, not a man-made PLF, not a host event, but an actual extraterrestrial species that are hostile to us or who are doing things that are harmful to the human future, those are the ones I would want to meet with first. I think you need a diplomatic, uh, calm mind and a diplomatic approach to Iran and North Korea more than you do to Canada. Um, I think that if you're sincere about peace, and I think that the big challenge of our time isn't just world peace, it is universal peace, that you have to look at this and say, if there was such a threat, we would really want to have the same approach that we're using now, and that is we go out into the stars, we invite these visitors to visit, we have had amazing, and I have to say universally beautiful things happen right. uh, when we do so. But if someone is convinced that there was a species, uh, some planetary system out there 
that was uh, against the, the, the good human future, the potential of humanity, I would really want to engage with them first. Those are the ones you would want to engage with first from a higher level of consciousness because let's deconstruct this for just a moment. What other, what other approach is going to be sensible? Um, if we would have destroyed the entire biosphere of the Earth with thermonuclear weapons in the Cold War, you know, the stated policy was mutual assured destruction, then imagine what the technological capabilities are for civilizations that are interstellar and go faster than the speed of light. Well, thermonuclear weapons would look like tinker toys. They would be uh, of no consequence when you're dealing with civilizations that are capable of such uh, technological feats, such as interstellar travel. Therefore, the idea that we're going to organize around conflict and war, given such a challenge, is foolishness, number one. And number two, it would not be survivable. And number three, uh, it won't work any more than launching several thousand thermonuclear weapons during the Cold War with uh, the Soviet Union would have worked. All it would have done is turned the planet into a cinder floating through space. So when you go through this analysis, ultimately what we have to do is say, let's make open contact with the intent of creating universal peace in our time. And so I say that to folks who, you know, who are just completely... Um, hanging on to the fact that there has to be out there um, harmful or evil uh, alien uh, species that are marauding around in our skies and, and uh, scooping people up out of their beds and what have you. And I think that if that's what you really believe, then you would still want to have this approach. The bottom line is that you would still do what C. SETI is doing the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And that's what we're going to do. We're, in, in, uh, we're going to do sort of a, a mass training program uh, and contact experiment in Arizona in October. I think it's the 24th, 25th, and 26th right. of October. Um, and uh, all of you who are listening are invited. And we're going to actually go through. Uh, Colin Andrews of Crop Circle fame will be there. Uh, I will be there. Dr. Loder will be talking about all the new energy breakthroughs. And um, Dr. Lynn Katai, who had uh, real personal contact during the Phoenix Lights event, will be speaking. And we're going to do this every night. We're going to be up till midnight, maybe later out under the stars, uh, and making contact and uh, using lasers and also consciousness and meditation and uh to make uh, contact with these visitors and to also create within the field of awareness the foundation for universal peace uh, into the future, manifesting it right now. And I'm thinking that if we have, you know, two or three or 400 people in that state of awareness engaged in that, it can have a huge effect, not just on Earth, but throughout the whole cosmos. And what we really are about is this sort of positive change and making a transformation, uh, facilitating the transformation, which is really inevitable at this point. I have no doubt in my mind that where we're headed is that we're headed towards a civilization that will be peaceful. We will have world peace. We will have universal peace. We're going to have these new technologies. And eventually, we will be traveling amongst the stars uh, in peace with these other civilizations uh, that, that have been certainly guardians of this planet, many of them for thousands if not millions of years. And so the approach would be the same. And I think that what we have to do, however, as we engage in such an undertaking, is it has to be childhood's end. Um, you can't take it face value. You can sympathize with someone and certainly uh, Sherry had an experience, Sherry Adamak had an experience like this, and I did also, where you get targeted with one of these terrible uh, astral body extraction technologies and uh, targeted with an abduction. Uh, and, but I knew where it was coming from. There was no question that it was man-made, made to look alien. Now, later, of course, I was able to get, and one of the advantages of being the director of the Disclosure Project Worldwide 
is that I have multiple independent corroborating witnesses on almost any subject you want to imagine, including this one. And that's why we've reached this conclusion that you have to be very careful about uh, reaching conclusions. Our conclusion is that you have to be careful reaching conclusions. Um, you can't say there's no possibility of a, of a threat ever existing because you can't prove a negative. But what you can say is that there's a huge body of evidence showing that a lot of things that pass as contact and as alien abductions is actually a very well-developed man-made high-tech program that's a psychological warfare initiative. And uh, this has been known for at least 20 years. I know Martin Cannon's work, I believe, was 1988, and he had put it together before then. There are other people I've talked to who have known about it from way before then uh, who were involved with it uh, back in the late 50s. And I think that what you have to look at, therefore, is how much of what's being reported to people, quite innocently, I have to say, is uh, real and how much of it is Memorex something that looks very real but would be designed to be frightening for the psychological response, mainly being that of fear and hatred. And I think this fear and hatred has to be looked at. Who would benefit from that? Who benefits from this kind of conflict? Well, could it be the $1 trillion military-industrial war machine that keeps manufacturing conflict all over the world? Yes. And I think that at their disposal are technologies that would curl your hair. They're, you know, if you think that the, the best thing that exists within a classified project is a jet engine and a radio transmitter, you're mistaken. I mean, the, these programs have things that are uh, not <laughs> inconsequential. They're not trivial. They are extremely well-developed systems and have been since the 50s. And I think this is why when you look at these cases, you have to have sympathy for the victims I want to be very clear on this. People who have been victimized by these sort of uh, horrific events, but you cannot then extrapolate and conflate uh, actual extraterrestrial interstellar civilizations and put all that onto them when it's man-made for some other secret agenda. I think you have to be very fair-minded about this and very just about it. Um, and, at, well, at the same time, I would never deny that there are people who have had terrible and horrifying experiences, because I know they have, because, frankly, I have. And I think that this is something that uh, requires a more mature level of analysis and understanding of who's doing it and why, and who benefits from the fear and the hatred that rises from that fear. And I think that it's very clear who that is. And it's the same cast of characters. Uh, this transnational military industrial cabal, which has been called Majestic, that benefits tremendously from the masses being stampeded into fear. Look what we gave up after 9-11. I mean, the whole Patriot Act and so many things that happened. Um, we, we were, our, our, our media and the public were completely passive as we invaded Iraq when Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. And it's been proven it hasn't, never mind what Dick Cheney said. So uh, I think that we have to be very careful because you're dealing with something very explosive here when you start, you know, saying that there are, you know, quote, good and bad aliens out there. Well, you're down, now you've gone right down the path of the thousands of years of, of, of uh, warfare and conflict and stupidity that has been the bane of human civilization uh, since recorded history. And I think we have to do better than that. I think we have to find a new way of thinking, a new way, and no problem has ever been solved from the level of consciousness that created it. So the consciousness of fear and hatred and division and ignorance isn't going to fix this problem. It's going to be one that's from a much higher level of awareness and understanding, but also a more honest and deep analysis of what's possibly going on out there. Um, one of the things that happened, and I, I think I've uh, mentioned this to you, Linda, uh, is that uh, in June of nine, uh, 2008, last year, right. yeah. uh, a member of our team and, and I, Ricky Butterfast in Denver, visited uh, Stan Romanek, 
uh, at his home there outside of Denver. And something very interesting was discovered. Um, he, I had seen that he had been on Larry King Live with this uh, Boo character uh, that what looked like a, quote, an alien. And um, I was very interested in what was going on. And a friend of his um, uh, wanted me to meet with him. And so I went out to his home, um, and we had a very interesting meeting. And in the course of the meeting, he showed me the videos and the audio tapes of what had been going on. And one of them, there was a, uh, what I'm, and he's convinced, is an, some sort of an, uh, Air Force intelligence person using a computerized voice that they call Audrey. It sounds like a British woman's voice will call his cell phone and give him certain information about an experience he's just had or warning him about something. And I think this may be because his father was in the Air Force. Stan Romanek's dad was an Air Force uh, uh, career person, uh, I understand. And Stan Romanek has been having a lot of these encounters and strange things happening. Well, one of them, he actually had a camera set up in his kitchen and filmed this strange creature that looks like a gray moving around, and then the camera goes blank. Well, after this event, um, and he had an abduction experience after that, after this, this voice called on his cell phone left the message, it's Audrey. I heard the tape personally, and so did Ricky Butterfast. And it, kept, and it kept saying that was one of the fake ones and that they threw a chemical canister or sprayed a chemical in your face that caused you to lose consciousness, which is why you dropped the camera and the camera went blank. And no one who was working with Stan Romanek understood what, quote, the fake one meant. And he said, what are they talking about, a fake one? I said, well, Stan this is a program life form. And I saw the whole video of it. It's classic. And it looks like a classic, quote, gray that people have experienced in these abductions. He says, well, what is that? I said, have you not read anything that we put out there on this? He said, no. I said, oh, my God. I said, well, that was one of the fake ones. That, that's a man-made alien. It's made to look like an alien. It's not extraterrestrial at all. And his mouth dropped open. He said, well, I've never heard of this. I said, it's because it's suppressed in the UFO and New Age community. You're not allowed to publish or speak. Or you will be blacklisted because it's a huge industry of fear that's selling fear through abductions and mutilations. He says, well, I didn't know that this was even possible, that we had classified projects that had these things. I said, yeah, of course we do and have had for decades. And that's why this person who's been your sort of protector behind the scenes, not trying to identify who they are using this strange British woman's computer voice, was telling you that's a fake one and that they had put a chemical in your face uh, that caused you to pass out. And this is classic. This is exactly what happened during the Benowitz affair, by the way, where there was years ago, I back in the, I don't know, 70s or 80s, I have to look at the dates, uh, Paul Benowitz was a UFO researcher, and a woman came to him and said, look, you know, I've been abducted. I had this experience, and it turned out that uh, he was being used to put disinformation out to the UFO community about one of these pseudo-abductions. And there was someone involved named Richard Doty, who's an Air Force officer, special investigation guy. But basically what happened is that a woman was driving near Kirkland Air Force Base in Sandia, in outside the Albuquerque, and saw something she wasn't supposed to see, and I'm sure it was one of these man-made uh, alien reproduction vehicles. And so she was stopped. A chemical was sprayed in her face. She fell unconscious. She was given this, quote, abduction experience and then returned later to her vehicle. Now, what's interesting is that that it was a very, very old case, but there, it, there are many of these. Um, at one point, uh, the executive director for the Intruders Foundation which was Bud Hopkins' group that was studying all of the abductions, called me up and said, you don't know how right you are. We have so many of these cases where it's clearly the military are involved in staging these abductions, but we can't talk about that. Nobody wants to bring that out. 
I said, well, why not? It's the truth. He says, well, we can't. He says, but I just wanted to let you know you're on the right track. So, you know, there is, I hate to say it, a conspiracy within the UFO and New, New Age community to not talk about this. And you have to question why that is. Um, but at the same time, my only concern is the truth, uh, creating a better and, and, and a peaceful future, and certainly exposing these hoaxes for what they are. And I think that the abduction and mutilation hoaxes, and that's another whole discussion of cattle mutilations. Uh, by the way, that's also a paramilitary human operation. And people who don't think that we have the ability surgically uh, and otherwise to do that in classified projects are, again, sadly mistaken. But the point I'm making is that there's a lot of information out there that is disinformation, but there are a lot of people who are unwitting uh, vectors of that disinformation. They don't really know. They're just reporting what someone's telling them, uh, or they're a victim of one of these things. And I'm saying this today on the World Puja Network so that people get a little more depth of understanding of how complex this problem is and to, to not jump off into fear and then jump off into concluding that we're under some kind of attack uh, by one or more uh, evil extraterrestrial civilizations. Uh, there's no evidence of that, frankly. There's a lot of evidence for some hanky-panky going on, I hate to say that, and some deception going on uh, by the intelligence community and by people who would like to create the specter of fear. And I think we have to be careful about that. I think we have to be very cautious about going down that path because what we don't want to do is trade all the conflict we have on this planet now uh, and unite, as the movie Independence Day suggested, around an alien threat so that we become united, but we're united in sort of this final uh, Armageddon battle in space with uh, ETs. I think there are certain religious groups who want to see us move in that direction that are eschatological in nature. Uh, they, they are wanting the end of the world to happen, uh, like Akhmenejad and fund a lot of really extreme fundamentalist orthodox people around the world in different religions. But I also think that we have another problem, and that is this kind of fear is how you control masses of people. And it's also how you get a lot of money that poured into to programs. Uh, a colonel I, I met, I uh, spoke with recently, I believe it was this spring, who uh, had been at meetings uh, during uh, the early years of the Ronald Reagan administration when they were ramping up the F FDI, the, the Star Wars program told me that the uh, threat from outer space by aliens was one of the things brought up at meetings to try to uh, convince uh, the hundreds of billions of dollars to be put into uh, black budget funding uh, in, in weaponizing space. So this, this card has been played over and over and over again. And I think, you know, it's like the old song, the don't, you know, let's not be fooled again, um, uh, that we have to be... Uh, cautious about being deceived because I view this sort of like the Wizard of Oz phenomenon where you have this uh, all this frightening sound and fury and stuff going on. You pull the curtain back and there's this little old man behind the curtain pulling a bunch of levers and scaring the bejeebies out of everybody, out of Dorothy and the lion and, and the scarecrow and everyone else. And I think that we, we need to not be uh, manipulated that way on something this important. And I would caution people uh, to uh, think deeply about uh, who would benefit from this kind of fear and conflict and to, to consider the fact that when you have an almost unlimited budget within biological sciences, uh, electromagnetic sciences, uh, energy and propulsion systems, and an intent, a clear stated intent, beginning in the early 50s at least, to use this issue for psychological warfare value. What kind of mischief can they make? And I think that's what you have to look at before you reach these sort of um, Manichaean conclusions of good and bad aliens out there. Um, my own view of it is that I don't think there are any hostile civilizations out there. If there are, I would welcome someone who has the ability or has had contact with them to uh, open contact between 
the CSETI diplomatic team and them because those are the folks that you would want to have a dialogue with first if you're sincere about peace. And that's what we're all about. So that's that's sort of my view on it. And I hope this has clarified things. It's covered a whole lot of very complex issues.